Ready? Yeah. All right. Um, hey guys, uh, I'm Rajat, and uh, I work out of Red Hat, and we we do lots of open source stuff. And uh, before we begin, uh, so this is where you guys can find me. This is my GitHub and LinkedIn. So hit me up. All right. So today we are going to talk about auto healing clusters and negative testing. So before we begin, uh, I wanted to know. Like a show of hands, if anyone does any kind of negative testing ever done, like, have you guys ever done any kind of negative testing? Oh, great. All right. All right. So before we talk about negative testing, we'll talk about auto-healing clusters. So what is an auto-healing cluster? So basically, it's a kind of cluster which basically monitors itself. And whenever there is a degradation of a cluster, you know, it will start a recovery process. So it will make always make sure key, I mean, it will always make sure that there is no kind of degradation happens in a cluster. All right. So now let's jump into testing. So I mean, this is what society thinks about people doing testing. So all right. So in particular, we'll talk about uh, negative testing and how it works. So these are some very basic examples for negative testing. So so basically. What negative testing is your system or your application or your cluster should be ready to uh, handle gracefully all the unexpected situations. So we'll jump back. Uh, as you can see here is that uh, these are unexpected situations. I mean, these are not the desired input that uh, our application wants. So if a user or somebody enters these kind of input, um, our system should be able to handle these type of situations gracefully. So. We'll look into more complex example and more practical later in the slides. All right. So why do we need negative testing in OpenShift or Kubernetes, as we say, is to obviously to detect unexpected conditions. And if we'll cover all the unexpected conditions, we'll all will also prevent it from the uh, will also prevent the cluster from crashing. So okay. So before we jump into practical scenarios, I just wanted to okay. I just wanted you guys to see this. So this is the cluster. And uh, this is the master node, the Kubernetes master node. And these are the worker nodes. So basically, basically worker nodes are the one where you deploy your workload. So as you can see, these are OSDs. So OSD stands for Object Storage Devices. And in short, term, in short you can say that these are, these are the devices or the disks which are used to store data. So you can call them, uh, you know, like, normal disk uh, storing data. Then you have the mon. So basically mon or monitor as we call. So this is used to watch over these OSDs. So if there is any problem with the OSDs, I mean, say your OSD is not working fine or you are stuck somewhere while working with OSDs, you can always look into the mon. You can check the logs for the monitors, and you will have all your answers. And these are the RGW. All right. Uh, I also don't know because I don't work with RGW, so I'm sorry what this means. So. Anyways, um, and these are the uh, rook agent or the rook self discover. These are the operators. So, in the entire, uh, in the, I'm sorry, in this entire worker node, if there is any kind of problem, like uh, if you want to have an overview of what's happening actually, you can always look into these pods. You can check uh, the logs for these pods, and you will have your answers. So now let's jump back. So these are the practical scenarios I was talking about where you can perform your negative testing. So first is, uh, what if the cluster gets disconnected from the network accidentally when an I/O was happening? Okay, so an input and output is happening, and okay, so suppose you are on this node, you are having one input and output, and what's let's just say your network uh, you got disconnected with the public network. All right, so uh, what will happen? So you know you can always uh, you know uh, test this scenario by yourself and you can have the uh, you know output and you can check if you already uh, wrote any kind of solution for it what i mean to say is that um, what i mean to say is that uh, i mean i'm sorry i forgot all right, i mean all right the uh, next uh, scenario is what happens if my cluster uh, what happens to a cluster if a node shut down so say if my entire nodes got shut down so what will happen? What will happen to the data? What will happen to the monitors? What will happen to anything? So these are the uh, scenarios that you can uh, you know, perform and check. Uh, if you have the uh, corner cases written for these kind of situations, then it's, then it's good. But if it's not, uh, you need to write it. So 
what are we testing today? We are going to test the disconnection of the cluster from the public network. Again, we are going to disconnect one cluster from the public network. And second is detaching the disks uh, from a running mon. So as I told you, these are the monitors. And uh, there is a disk attached to it where this monitor runs. So, so we are going to detach that and see the outcome. So, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, can you see it? All right. So here as it starts, all right. So this is the command to detach a disk from a monitor. So this is the name of the VM, uh, I mean the virtual machine where the where my monitor is running or my node where my monitor is running. This is the name of that image and then I'll just disconnect it. All right, um, so, all right, so disk is, I mean, So now the disk is detached. Now we'll check the output of what is happening. So, I want. Yeah, so this is the, you can say it's kind of a dashboard where you can see the entire health of your cluster. So right now I'm running a Ceph cluster. So I can check the entire cluster. So right now there is no problem with, the, with my clusters at all because health is okay. Um, all my demons are up, my OSDs, as I told you, my storage devices all are working since very fine. So, all right, so as you can see, as I just detached my monitor, uh, disk from my monitor, my monitor got into error status. All right, I mean, I was just highlighting it, so. And now as you can see, the, uh, uh, like the status of my Ceph cluster has been changed. It says that one, of, uh, one by three monitor is down. So that means when I negative tested it, there was already a solution written for it. So that means you have already verified it, you know, keep, you know that um, my cluster will work fine if it will get into a situation like this. So you need not to worry about it now. Just a second, and yeah, and there it goes. I'm sorry. Yeah, so as you can see, it start, it's, it's changed its status from error to crash loop back off. So that means it's kind of a loop. So what I mean to say is that uh, it started an auto-healing process. So it is constantly running in a loop, and it is trying to find the disk, if it is there or not. It's just re-verifying it. But it's not finding, it's, uh, like my monitor is not able to find the attached disk. So that is why into it was it's just running into a loop to find it again and again. So so now what I'll do I'll attach the disk again. So here the command is all right. I mean yeah. So I think the player is there. So that is why you aren't able to see it, but. Yeah, so if you can see the command right now, this is the command to attach the disk back again to the monitor. Now we'll uh, check the, watch the status again. So right now the health is still in the warning phase. Now we got a new error for a container creating config error. So even if the disk is attached, uh, still we are not able to uh, uh, get the monitors running again. So. This is the problem, like, uh, so you, now you can, you have an output, now you can report this back to developers or you can write a code for this by yourself. Is that uh, whenever you attach a disk, uh, the cluster should be up and running again and again, but that doesn't work. So now I have to manually delete the pod and uh, So people who are familiar with Kubernetes, uh, it's a concept, I mean, you guys must be knowing is that it's a concept for a replication controller, uh, is that whenever you delete a pod, uh, the pod will again come back up. So that is gonna happen. That is what is gonna happen. We have, I've deleted the pod and the pod will come back again. I'm checking the port status again, so. Yep, so as you can see, 
All right. Okay, again the player is there, so you cannot see it. But this is the mon uh, which was in the pending or in the error state. But uh, since it's the player is here, so you are not able to see the. Oh, okay, good. I mean, so as you can see, it got into the running phase again when uh, when we deleted the pod. So, so this was uh, one thing. This is the one testing that I did is detaching the mon. Now we'll look into. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah, so now we'll uh, look into disconnection of a cluster from the public network. So what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, disconnect one entire node from the uh, cluster by shutting down its public interface, public network interface. So let's see what happens. All right, so this is the node, and this is the IP. And now we're going to get the, uh, we are, we first SSH into the node, and now we are going to get the public network interface for this node. Okay. All right, so this is the command that I'm typing for, is to uh, shut down the public network interface. So once the public network interface is down, nobody should be able to uh, SSH into the node. So this is what uh, I was expecting before uh, testing it. So now let's see the result. If, if, it, if it's behaving like the way it was coded, it's fine. But if it's not, then that's a problem. Yeah, so I shut it down. Now let's see the outcome if I'm able to SSH into the nodes or not. Okay, still there is no response. So that is a good thing is that, uh, uh, you know, once you have shut down the, uh, once you have shut down one node, uh, it's not able to give back any kind of information. So that's why it's into the, uh, you know, there is no further uh, command, or it's, this command is not getting uh, completed. So now here I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to try to SSH into the same node again, with the same IP. And as you can see, I got a warning that uh, something nasty, it's possible that someone's doing something nasty. And I'm not able to SSH into the node. So that verifies the thing is that once my public interface, network interface is down, nobody is able to access it. So, yep. All right, uh, just to verify again, uh, this is the pod that was running on the node that I just shut down. And let us just uh, try to SSH into this pod. And let's see if, if this happens or not. Yeah, and again, uh, I was not able to SSH into the uh, pod because the node that was, uh, I mean, the pod on which this, uh, I mean, the node on which this pod was running, that is already shut down. So it is happening as expected. So yeah, so that is how I negative tested these. That is how I negative tested these two scenarios. And yeah, that concludes it. And if you have any questions, so. <laughs> okay, that was, uh, uh, actually, a good question for this morning. Yeah. Uh, how can we, like, do we have any ideas or suggestions on how can we uh, apply this technique for uh, the negative testing, the self healing? Uh, is there something like uh, more regular, like testing the web app or like a mobile app? Um, like local cluster? Yeah, so firstly, you need to have some kind of uh, unexpected situations. <laughs> figure out already, which don't happen very often. And then uh, you can, you can uh, automate things if you want, or you can negative test it. So.
when you inject your your failure, the mon component detects them, and something triggers a reaction to that. I'm sorry. And something in the cluster triggers a reaction to the to the failure. I'm um, uh, sorry. Can you come again with the question? Um, so, uh, let me see if I understand the. the yeah. Sure. Yeah. When uh, you inject a failure in the. In yes. The explicitly. Yeah. Worker, the mon component, the monitor component, detects that failure. Yeah. And uh, you can script some kind of reaction, reaction to yep. the failure. Yep. Yep. So, so at the node level. Yeah, node level. But when the failure is uh, too persistent, you okay. delegate to the cluster. For yes. The replication controller. Yes. And you just launch a new one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Can you, can you please summarize what you know why? Sorry. All right, so the thing that he was asking, if I understood correctly, is that uh, if my mon was shut down and uh, if there is some kind of uh, permanent uh, cluster damage happens, then what ones do, right? Yeah, so. some presents for speakers. Oh, really? We have a beer for you from Susan. We've got these socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, do we need anything? Uh, we need to okay, put this to the microphone, yes. HDMI, yes. Just put it like here? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Here is good, yes. Yeah. It's perfect. Pocket. Actually, I'll bring over a chair for some of it. Um, okay, maybe I can I put my laptop over here somehow? No, not really, I guess. Uh, ten minutes, I guess. We'll start right on time, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I can minutes like then getting a button break and hurry back. Yes. You can try. Uh, it's just. But. What will happen if I accidentally hit any of these buttons? Uh, nothing. These are lights. You cannot hit them so hard that they do something bad. This is enough. I think maybe I'll just be standing. Or, I mean, you think? I mean, you can sit, but you hide behind the computer. Yeah, it's a bit. I'll just try to do it standing. It's just going to be some typing. Repeat or summarize for the people who are watching on the live stream yeah. and for the recording. Speak louder. 
if you can. Yeah, yeah. I think I tend to speak pretty loud at these things, so I'm just afraid that I kind of blast these guys uh, too much. I will control this on the camera. Ah, okay. Great. It's the first time I tried to do this, as, I mean, basically in a very long time, so it's like... Uh, I think first time it's just like a really cool conference, you know, but it's also very casual, like I sign up for this thing and I just walk in here on the day and then I didn't know if there was somewhere I had to go and uh, ah, sign up or something yeah. like that. You didn't you receive like an email with instructions for the FAQ on the website? <laughs> yeah, I tried to find some information, but I don't know. No, we, should do we should do a Git repo. Yeah, the yeah. Speaker survival guide. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, because I looked in the like on the first web webpage for like uh, if there was some notes for speakers or something like that, but it's not like no, not really. It's like no. five sentences. <laughs> True, but you consent to being recorded. Everything is Creative Commons. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's fine. Hvis du genererer en masse sådan, uh, attention og sådan noget på, uh, <laughs> det, så kommer der rigtig mange ind og ser på det, ikke? fordi bare folk ja. der står bare der, står bare en mand i bare overkrop. Så, ja. Jeg kan også se videoerne, der er også dejligt skyld på bordet. Ja. ja, præcis. Sådan en ting der. Det var en nappe inden, du ved. Det er bleeding edge-spillet, man har. Bare for at undstøtte, at man kan skrive mikro med UTF-8 i det. Sådan. Det må man kalde det fejl. Thirty. I thought it was twenty-five. Okay. Yeah, but I thought we started fourteen twenty-five. We just moved it up, or what? Sure. Ah, so it's a little bit fourteen twenty-five. Let me see. Oh, okay.